most likely you've received this video because you or someone you love are preparing for stereotactic radiation treatment at Stanford. Sometimes having medical procedures can feel overwhelming, but knowing what to expect will make things easier. The people you will meet in this video are actual members of your Stanford healthcare team. They have created this video to walk you through what to expect during your treatment and how to manage any side effects that may occur after your treatment. At Stanford, we are committed to providing the best possible quality, safety, and compassionate care. We hope this video will help you feel comfortable every step of the way during your stereotactic radiation treatment. Stereotactic radiation treatment uses targeted, high-energy x-rays to destroy tumors. Radiation destroys cancer cells by stopping their ability to divide and grow. This is basically the same type of radiation used to take a chest x-ray, and it cannot be seen or felt. One advantage of stereotactic radiation therapy is that it is very precise. It zeroes in within one millimeter of a tumor cell. The types of stereotactic radiation machines at Stanford include CyberKnife, Trilogy, and TrueBeam. Stanford has a track record of being pioneers in leading edge radiation treatment. The first medical linear accelerator in the Western Hemisphere was developed at Stanford by Dr. Henry Kaplan and the first patient treated in 1956. The first cyber knife was developed at Stanford by Dr. John Adler and the first patient was treated in 1994. We are now one of the only centers with two state-of-the-art cyber knife systems and in September of 2010, we treated our 5,000th patient more than any other treatment center in the world. Many of the advanced radiotherapy techniques for stereotactic ablative radiotherapy, also called stereotactic body radiation therapy, were developed at Stanford. We have reported some of the first prospective clinical studies investigating the clinical utility of stereotactic ablative radiotherapy for treatment of lung, liver, pancreas, and prostate cancer. Also in September of 2010, Stanford became the first center on the West Coast to treat patients with a new TrueBeam STX system using respiratory-gated rapid arc, a technique that offers extremely precise targeting of tumors that move with breathing. There are four steps in your radiation treatment plan. These are consultation, simulation, also known as setup, treatment planning, and finally, treatment and follow-up. The first step of your treatment will be to meet with a radiation doctor who specializes in treating your specific condition. You may also meet with other team members, such as a surgeon who specializes in stereotactic radiation, or a resident, a doctor learning to become a radiation specialist. You might also meet a nurse practitioner or nurse coordinator. There are also social workers, dietitians, insurance authorization specialists, and other professionals available to address any concerns you may have. Your doctors will review your medical records and your medical history, perform a physical examination, and discuss treatment recommendations with you. During this meeting, you will be asked to give written permission or informed consent for your treatment. Your doctors will determine how many treatments you'll need based on your specific condition. Small metal markers called fiducials allow the radiation treatment machine to track tumors that move with breathing. If you have a tumor that might move during treatment, you may need to have fiducial markers inserted before you begin treatment. Your doctor will tell you if you will need fiducial markers. If you do not need fiducials, you will continue on to the next step in the process, simulation. Fiducials are inserted by the endoscopy or interventional radiology department. You will be sedated for the 90 minute procedure. You should plan on being at Stanford for four to six hours because you will need evaluation before the fiducial marker placement as well as time to recover from sedation after placement. You will need to have someone drive you home after the procedure. If you will need fiducial markers, simulation will occur one week after the placement of the markers. 
The next step in the process is called simulation. In simulation, you will run through a practice treatment procedure. This helps your team create your personalized treatment plan. The simulation takes place in the Radiation Oncology Department, located on the basement level of the Stanford Advanced Medicine Center, which is also known as the Cancer Center. When you arrive, check in at the Radiation Oncology Department reception desk to let everyone know you are here. Unless you are told otherwise, you must not eat or drink liquids other than water for four to eight hours before the simulation appointment. Water and medications are okay. There are a few more things to note. One, if you forget to fast, your simulation appointment may be rescheduled. Two, you may be asked to complete blood work before the simulation. And three, be sure to let your doctor or nurse know if you are allergic to shellfish or iodine. If you have diabetes, your instructions might be different. You may have to change the way you take your medications both before and after the simulation appointment. Your doctor or nurse will explain this to you in detail. If you take metformin, also known as glucophage, you will need to stop taking it on the day of simulation and for two days after. You will need a blood test before you start taking metformin again. During simulation, you will be placed in your treatment position. Either a CT and or a PET scanner will take x-ray pictures of you. It is important that you are in the same position for every treatment you receive. To make sure that you are positioned in exactly the same way for each treatment, devices to keep you still, such as a headrest, face mask, or a foam cradle may be used. You will use these devices, created especially for you, throughout the course of your treatment. For patients undergoing treatment for brain and spine tumors, an MRI is required during simulation. These patients would complete a short 15-minute MRI scan in the imaging department. A staff member will escort you to your MRI appointment. You may be asked to drink or receive an injection of a contrast dye. This gives doctors the best possible view of the area being treated. Several temporary markers may be placed on your skin to help ensure proper positioning. To protect your safety, you will have your picture taken to identify you as the patient and to document your position on the treatment table. Once the simulation is completed, you can return home. Your doctors will now develop your individualized treatment plan. Once simulation is complete, you may be contacted by the schedulers to confirm your final treatment schedule. Before you can begin treatment, your team will create a specific treatment plan just for you. Depending on your diagnosis and type of treatment involved, creating the plan can take up to two weeks. All of the details involved in your radiation therapy are included with the ultimate goal of killing the tumor and keeping surrounding tissue healthy. Once the treatment plan is complete, your entire team, including the medical physicist, radiation doctor, surgeon, and therapist, review the plan and perform their own verification checks for safety. When you arrive for treatment, check in at the reception desk Wear comfortable clothes. You can listen to music you choose during treatment. So feel free to bring your favorite music. Treatment times vary from 30 minutes to two hours. And the treatment course may vary from one to five sessions based on the treatment plan developed by your doctor. If your tumor is in the abdomen, you may take medication to prevent nausea. Your physician will prescribe this medication for you to take twice a day for 14 days only. Take this medication one hour before your first treatment. Your doctor will provide specific instructions. Before each session for patient safety, you will be asked to tell us who you are and what procedure you are having done. We will review your treatment record with you and answer any questions you may have. At the beginning of the treatment, Images will be taken to make sure you are in the correct position. 
Although you will be alone in the treatment room during treatment, you are visible on monitors and there is an intercom so you can communicate with staff. During the treatment, you wear a headrest, face mask, or foam cradle that was made for you at the simulation. The machine will rotate around you and will make sounds. You will not feel anything as the procedure is painless. During the treatment session, images will be taken to make sure you are in the proper position. When treatment is complete, you may be given medications such as a steroid to manage inflammation or a pill for nausea. Your doctors will review plans for your follow-up care. Typically, you will have follow-up scans and a clinic visit in two to six months. You may be called at home to schedule this appointment. There may be side effects from your radiation treatment. These side effects may occur right after treatment or may occur months to years later. The side effects that you experience depend on the area of the body that was treated. Contact your nurse or doctor if you think that you may be experiencing treatment-related side effects. They will determine what is needed to relieve your symptoms. Most side effects can be managed by a phone conversation between you and your caregivers. Fatigue, feeling tired, is a common side effect of radiation therapy. Patients describe feeling weak, worn out, and tired. Remember to get eight hours of sleep each night, take frequent naps and rest breaks if needed, and exercise routinely to help with the fatigue. Let's review the possible side effects that may happen in different parts of the body. These body sites are brain, head and neck, chest and abdomen, spine, radiation-induced tumors. You can fast forward to the area of your body that was treated with radiation. If you have a tumor in the brain, you may have headaches within the days or weeks after radiation treatment. The headaches can usually be managed with over-the-counter headache medications, such as Tylenol or ibuprofen. If this does not work, contact your nurse. Nausea may occur and is easily managed with anti-nausea medications. If your tumor is near the scalp, you may lose a patch of hair. This will occur within a month after radiation treatment and typically grows back. If your tumor is located in an area that puts you at risk for seizures, your physician will prescribe an anti-seizure medication on the day of treatment. And because the radiation can cause inflammation around the site that was treated, you may be given a steroid medication on each of the treatment days. This medication, called Decadron or Dexamethasone, can cause difficulty sleeping and make you feel jittery, increase your appetite, and upset your stomach. Also, a delayed reaction, radiation swelling, can occur six to 18 months after treatment. This may or may not cause symptoms. These symptoms can be reduced or even stopped with steroids. Patients may experience headaches in the weeks after radiation treatment of skull-based tumors. These headaches are usually managed with over-the-counter medications, such as Tylenol or ibuprofen. If this does not work, contact your nurse or doctor. Patients with tumors located in the head may find the lining of the mouth to be red and sore. This can be treated with an oral rinse. Your nurse can teach you about recommended oral care plans. Tumors irradiated within the neck may be associated with throat discomfort. These symptoms occur shortly after treatment and will resolve within a few weeks. An oral pain medication, which you swish in your mouth and then swallow, can be used to lessen the discomfort. Notify your nurse or doctor if you develop difficulty swallowing. Radiation can also cause inflammation around the treated tumor site, so you may be given a steroid medication on each of the treatment days. This medication, called Decadron or Dexamethasone, can cause difficulty sleeping, a jittery feeling, increased appetite, and or upset stomach. Although stereotactic radiation treatment is not the primary treatment for head and neck patients, it provides a higher dose of radiation to a tumor in the head and or neck area. The higher dose helps improve the results of external beam radiation treatment or treats a tumor that has grown back after previous radiation therapy. If you are being treated for a lung tumor, you may develop radiation pneumonitis, an inflammation of the lung tissue from radiation. It may appear a few months after treatment with symptoms such as worse than usual dry cough or shortness of breath that does not go away. Please contact your nurse, as you may need to treat this with a short course of steroids. If your tumor is located near a rib, you might feel pain in the rib. 
Taking high-dose anti-inflammatory medications, such as ibuprofen for a couple of weeks, can provide good pain relief. Since anti-inflammatory medications can cause stomach irritation, you may also be given a medication to reduce this side effect. Radiation therapy may also weaken nearby rib bones. This won't cause any symptoms, but if you were to fall or be in a car accident, these ribs may break more easily than a rib that has never had any radiation treatment. The most common side effects from radiation therapy for liver and pancreatic tumors include heartburn and nausea. GERD, or gastroesophageal reflux disease, is a condition in which the esophagus and stomach lining becomes irritated. If you have GERD symptoms, such as heartburn, regurgitation, or nausea, let us know so that an appropriate medication can be prescribed. You might experience nausea during the week of your treatment. If you are at risk of developing nausea, we will give you a medication to prevent it, called Zofran. Zofran is taken twice a day for 14 days. If you are not taking Zofran but have nausea, notify your nurse coordinator who will provide the medication. The side effects that you may experience after radiation treatment of spinal tumors depend on the part of the spine that was treated. Neck tumors may be associated with throat discomfort. This typically occurs shortly after treatment and will resolve within a few weeks. An oral pain medication, which you swish in your mouth and then swallow, can reduce the discomfort. Treatment of tumors within the lower spine can be associated with nausea and diarrhea. Both can be controlled with medication. This can occur shortly after treatment and should resolve within a few weeks. A delayed reaction of swelling can occur in a small number of patients. This reaction usually occurs within six to 12 months after treatment and is managed with steroids. Notify your nurse or doctor if you experience weakness or numbness of the arms or legs or any problems with bowel or bladder function. Tumors caused by radiation treatment are highly unlikely. However, because any radiation exposure can increase the risk of these tumors, it is important that patients be informed of this small risk. The tumors can appear 10 to 20 years after receiving radiation treatment in the part of the body where the tumor was treated. Radiation-induced tumors can either be benign, non-cancerous, or malignant, cancerous. Again, please keep in mind that radiation-induced tumors are highly unlikely. If you have additional questions that were not addressed in this video, they are important to us. Please call us at your convenience at this number. We look forward to caring for you at Stanford.